So the way too fast rundown on FINRA record retention stuff. I think it's pretty easy to just make it really complicated. First, everything is three years. If you're not sure, just pick three years. It's most likely the rule. The only thing is that confuses this a little bit. I'm just going to make it harder because that's what I do. Um, the FINRA actually says if there's not a mention of what the record retention is, you assume it's six years. But very few things are not covered. So almost everything's covered under something. I'm just throwing that out there. Everything's three years except for complaints are four years. AML stuff, anti-money learning stuff is five years, okay? That's CTRs, suspicious activity reports, anything to do with identification for all that stuff, okay? That's AML, that's that's five years. Now, six years is, San, I have an acronym. Six years is Santa's carry six big sacks. I'm just fucking that up. Santa carries six big sacks. So it's B, G, S, C, S. Those are the five, okay? Trade blotter, boom, blotter. Then we have general ledger. Trade blotter is a list of all the trades. G for general ledger. That's all the money going in and out. Then we have, that's the B and the G. Then we have stock records, S. And then the customer information is also six years. And then the last one is statements. And the reason I put S on the end, I usually do a little S of big sacks, is because statements aren't actually specifically listed out on the rules, but they're part of like the trade stuff. So all purchase and sale requirements have to be kept for six years. But confirms are only three years, which is interesting. But I remember big sacks for the six, and that makes it easier. Let's throw the crazy part in there. MSRB has complaints for six years. Why they wanted to fuck that up, I don't know. They just got to be different. I mean, they don't enforce, so they don't care. FINRA has to deal with it. Remember that MSRB doesn't enforce. Little tidbit. Adding on to that, lifetime. These are like articles of incorporation, board minutes, articles of partnership to create the broker-dealer. Creation docs for the broker-dealer are lifetime, life of the enterprise. That's what they say. So again, everything's three years, complaints are four, AML is five, Big Sacks is six, and lifetime is articles of incorporation and all that stuff. Now, I have one more thing to add, and you're going to like it. What the hell is on an order ticket? And then I'll do a confirm after this. First of all, an order ticket, you have to have on there the terms and conditions of the order and any modifications or cancellations. Easy. You have to identify the account for which the order is entered. You don't need the name of the account number. There has to be some way to identify it, okay? You have to identify the associated person responsible for the account and any person who entered or accepted the order. Boom. You have to describe whether it was subject to discretionary authority or not. You have to, you have to, if you can, put the time of execution or cancellation. You can't do that in the beginning. You can do it at the end. And you have to execute, you have to identify the time the order was received and the price and time when it was executed. So the next one is what is, what's on a confirmation. So a confirmation is what you get when you, after you do a trade, like two days later, T plus two, when that's when they say completion of the trade, that's when it is. And a lot of disclosures have to be delivered, usually ahead of the time, but a lot of them have to be done by the completion of the trade. It's just on the due date of the confirmation. So let's get into this. First of all, you need the identity and price of the security being bought or sold. That makes sense, what we bought, what we sold, the number of shares or the principal amount, units. We have to have the date. Now, we don't have to have the time of the trade on this. The order ticket will, but the confirm won't have the time, but you will say, hey, if you really want the time, we can give it to you. We have to list the capacity. Are you an agent for the customer, agent for another person, principal, all that stuff, okay? You have to have the dollar price and yield. Now, if it's a debt, you have the dollar price and the yield. And remember, we use yield to worst. So if it's a premium, it's yield to call. If it's a discount, it's yield to maturity. They will never be able to do tax equivalent yield, okay? Now, you also have to know if it's callable. It means it's preferreds are callable, bonds are. So if it's just common stock, they won't have it. But on a preferred or common, a preferred or bond, it could be callable. So they will have to state whether it's callable or not. And they have to have the settlement date, which is T plus two, which is pretty much like you got the confirmant selling today. Okay, I hope that helps a little bit. That's record retention with a little bit of extra stuff on there. I hope it helps. I have a bunch more videos coming out. Let's get on it. And don't forget to watch me. Every Tuesday and Thursday night, a live free Q&A. It's some badass shit, man.